Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Here's a headline from the Crypto Basic. Expert recommends recognizing XRP true worth urges looking beyond price. Now, I will say this. When I jumped into crypto almost six years ago, I recognized very quickly that, because uh, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure this out, the entire asset class tends to move in tandem. It just does. And here we are six years later, and my perspective regarding that really hasn't changed. If you're asking, why is it the case that we don't see individual cryptocurrencies sufficiently, uh, you know, uh, in terms of abilities parsed out? Like, why, why, why aren't they actually judged by their own utility or adoption, blend of that, and maybe some other things that are worth considering? Why don't we see that? And I think it's just cl a clear indication that we're in a very immature market, even after all this time, and the public at large on a global scale, really isn't so sure which cryptocurrencies are going to be long-term viable. And there's some people like me, and, uh, and if you're listening to this, I'm willing to bet you're in the same group here, where you're recognizing the importance of actual utility. And so my supposition is that more people are going to catch on to that over time as, as, uh, as things progress. But it's not so easy to wade through all the muck this quickly. <laughs> but um, my gosh, the opportunity is there. And it's, it's so fascinating, too, because you can look at Bitcoin, which is still number one in terms of, of market cap. It's the most well-known cryptocurrency on the planet. But it's arguably the least technologically impressive and the least useful. But, um, you know, certainly on a, on a layer one, at least. And we don't have sufficient adoption of Bitcoin on a layer two, I, I would argue. You can talk about Lightning Network or even utilizing XRP Ledger for moving Bitcoin, but we don't have true adoption of that. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But then you have XRP. And I don't think that it's layer one technology is sufficiently appreciated in this world. Not right now. And so it's one of those things that makes me skeptical that Bitcoin's going to be number one in market cap forever. And if it is, the only reason it will be is because it was number one first mover advantage. And that's pretty much it. Well, I guess you could tack on also layer two's working because without layer two's working uh, for Bitcoin seamlessly uh, so well that, you know, you, 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 it doesn't matter one tiny little bit that it's layer one technology is the worst that exists. Unless you get to something approaching that, I just, I don't see how it would stay number one forever because I don't think what Bitcoin is doing is, is solving the biggest problem out there. And what's it doing? Store of value? And because look, XRP does that. There are other cryptocurrencies that are being utilized for that. But with XRP, you don't have to worry about block size or this or that. We don't have the arguments that you have in the world of Bitcoin about its technological inefficiencies. XRP just works. And so I just, I don't think that today it, that is being sufficiently appreciated and especially considering the tremendous chaos in the world of crypto, certainly in terms of price action, I wanted to talk about that a little bit more because we are at a point where I personally believe that um, XRP is undervalued because we're in a world where actual value isn't appreciated because value is different than price. But before sharing with you additional thoughts on this, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So let's make sure we're on the same page here, because like I said a minute ago, uh, price and value are not the same things. For instance, I was reading this article from Cointelegraph earlier today, and I'm not going to read through it just to make a point here. Uh, this uh, analyst, Rakesh Upade, um, it's his perspective that, you know, it's a possibility that we could see XRP drop further. I think he said maybe down to even 41 cents if things don't go so well. So then we're just talking about the open market price. And if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Either way, the entire asset class moves in tandem. I've been talking about that a lot recently, so that's not the purpose of this video. But when we're, we're talking about actual utility, we're, we're talking about problems that can actually be solved. And so... Find, I believe anyway, finding cryptocurrencies that actually are useful uh, and spotting that before the rest of the world has a freaking clue, to me, that seems like a really good thing if we're able to do that. Right, right. Wouldn't that be, isn't that a good concept? Can we agree on that? That if you're able to spot that something's functionally useful and not that many people know about it actually, don't you think that, uh, you know, people figure it out, more money might flow into the thing because people recognize value, generally speaking? Because that's what that's what I'm looking at it certainly. I just think that it's, it takes a, as evidenced by the fact it's six years now that I'm in the space, and it's the same as when I jumped in. People still haven't sufficiently figured this stuff out, 
And when you I mean you could talk about stock market uh, stocks correlating with one another, and there's some truth that for for um, black swan events, wildcard events, all that jazz, you can see big swings on the whole for the Dow Jones or the S and P 500. That's true, but not the same. It's not the same as what you see in the world of crypto. Because at least with stocks, you do generally see that they are valued individually. You know, and there are there are all sorts of obviously, you know, quarterly reports, isn't that it's so it's it, it's completely, completely different in that regard. If if a if a company is just absolutely awful and it looks like they're not not doing a great job at turning a profit, do you think they're gonna be around much longer? Do you think that money's gonna be flowing in on the stock market? Because I'll tell you, if there's a cryptocurrency that doesn't do a damn thing today, it doesn't matter as much as perhaps it should. You know, it's a market difference as far as I'm concerned. But the XRP and the XRP Ledger has utility just in spades. So check this out. This piece reads as follows. Renowned financial expert advises investors to recognize the opportunity presented by the recent XRP price dip, urging them to acquire the coin at a discounted price. One major benefit of a crypto dip is allowing investors to acquire the asset at a discounted price. Interestingly, renowned financial analyst Linda Jones shares this sentiment as she takes to X to highlight the advantages of the XRP price dip. Yeah, and so I'll pause and note, um, I don't agree with Linda on everything, but that doesn't particularly matter. Nobody has to agree with me on anything. <laughs> you know, I just, I appreciate civil discourse here. But I wanted to say, I, I do agree with the sentiment that she's sharing here. And um, if memory serves, I think that she actually used to work on Wall Street for like a couple decades here. And I think she's hitting the nail on the head, for, particularly here. And she said, it is, or the piece continues rather, it is common knowledge that XRP plunged alongside other crypto assets in the late hours of yesterday. The fifth cryptocurrency by market capitalization plummeted to a 24-hour low of 47.6 cents, according to CoinGecko data. When writing this line, XRP is changing hands at 50 cents, down 14.5% over the past day. While the price action of XRP has left many in huge loss, Jones thinks the dip could be a blessing in disguise. In a tweet today, she noted that investors continue focusing on XRP's current price or value. And that's not the quite the right way to, to word that. She's talking about value uh, rather than price. Anyway, peace continues. The top analyst explain that price is the amount required as payment for something. And so here's the actual comment from her. This is what she actually wrote on X, formerly known as Twitter. You can focus on price or you can focus on value. Price is what you pay for something. Value is how much it's worth beyond what you paid for it. Smart people look for value, recognize opportunity, and take advantage of it. Right, so given the fact that the XRP price has been down, and not because something bad happened with it specifically, might that be viewed reasonably as an opportunity? Well, I'm sure there are, well, there obviously are people that viewed it as an opportunity, which is why eventually XRP found a local bottom and has been stable for whatever it is, over 24 hours at this point, more or less. So there are people that stepped in and were like, oh, you guys are panic selling. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll purchase your fear. There, there was that. But it's at an even lower price now, but the value of it didn't change. And you know what, I love thinking back to this too. Let's talk about some additional value, which again is different than price. Uh, you know who else has recognized value? Do you remember some of those amicus briefs in the SECB Ripple case? Remember Tap Jets utilizing XRP to solve the Friday night problem? Because this is a, you may recall this is a private uh, jet chartering company. And with legacy finance, uh, you know, good luck moving big amounts of money on the weekend. Unless, you know, <laughs> you better have it where you want it uh, prior to that because... These, uh, the private jet chartering, not a world I live in, but I read from tap jets that for a flight just in the continental U.S., a flight could be $60,000. And if you're talking about, um, you know, transatlantic flights or something like that, it could be like $300,000. Well, legacy finance kind of sucks. We all know this. There's <laughs> Cryptocurrency is superior, superior in a general sense, and XRP is way better at being money than Bitcoin is. That's for damn sure. And tap jets figured this out. So they solved what, what they called the Friday night problem, which is if, uh, I know it's rich people problems, but if you want to hop on a jet and it's last minute and it's Friday, if you don't have the money on hands, you're not going to be able to do it because you have to pay up front because that's a lot of money. That's pretty much it. And fine, you could laugh and say, ha ha, rich people problem. But there's a market for this. And this support, and like, it's like when these rich people are paying all this stuff, 
that goes to support companies. Companies have employees. It's good for the economy. So it's actually not that funny. I know some people tend to have that response. Oh, God, rich people, the Friday night, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But, but still, like, it's, it's, it's part of the economy. And it's, it's, that's a good thing. So, but, but the problem's been solved. And so they accept various cryptocurrencies, but they noted that the one that they, uh, they get the most, it's XRP. It's crucial because it's being used in place of money. And it's not something that even Tapjet was like holding um, to, to make a profit on anything. It's not, not an investment for them. It just gets converted as quickly as possible back to United States dollars for them. But the point is they solved an actual problem with XRP. That's one more example right there. And XRP Ledger is so amazing. And even though it's layer one technology, you can use it as though it's layer two technology, which is being done right now because you can issue assets on the XRP Ledger. It has the world's first ever built in uh, a built-in decentralized exchange. So you can issue anything you want on it. Gold has been traded on the XRP ledger. Bitcoin gets traded on the XRP ledger. And an XRP can connect to every asset that's that's uh, tokenized on the XRP ledger. There's a pair for all that, obviously, because XRP is native to the XRP ledger. And so there's Spend the Bits, which is a, a platform that was created uh, to help Bitcoin be spent like money because Bitcoin has an awful layer one technology. It, it just is. It has a layer one technology. It's just not good. But there is something to be said with first mover advantage. Like it, it matters as evidenced by the fact that Bitcoin is number one after all these years, even though it's the least impressive technology in the world of crypto out there. It just is. But this concept can work in XRP's favor too. Look at all the things that I just cited here. First mover advantage when it comes to decentralized exchange. What about the fact that since it's been, been traded now for over a decade, it's got uh, some of the greatest liquidity in the world of crypto. That's something you actually can't program into it. But isn't that, doesn't that represent value? Isn't there something you, that can be used for? Well, Ripple agrees in positioning XRP as a bridge currency. There's yet another case. What about NFTs? Look, NFTs are not going away. And they're more than just overpriced JPEGs. They're fantastic at being overpriced JPEGs, but there's other utility. There's all sorts of stuff. I've gone in depth about this in terms of uh, how it can change how royalties are paid out. And now XRP Ledger has built in a layer one, thanks to an amendment, it has built in layer one uh, NFT functionality that it didn't when it was launched a decade ago. Because thankfully, there's a built-in amendment process. And to me, the fact that there's that process built in represents value. XRP Ledger is oozing value. It's gross. It's like pussy. It's it's oozing so much. It's like pussy. But it's fantastic. You want that disgustingness, right? That's some good ooze right there. I love it. And then, you know, actually, there's something. I haven't had time sufficiently to look into this, but I will mention it. Uh, just popped up in my feed on X from Crypto Eddie. I, I read about it um, because it caught me off guard. I read about it for probably close to 10 minutes, so I'm not ready to speak in depth about it. But I wanted to mention it because the concept is so interesting. What about oracles on the XRP ledger? Now, this would be something here. So here's the tweet from my fellow XRP YouTuber, Crypto Eddie. She wrote, um, totally unexpected. Oracles on the XRP ledger providing off-chain data or information to decentralized applications, or DApps for short, real-world data, uh, such as market prices, exchange rates, interest rates, weather. Uh, and then she wrote, uh, the possible upgrade slash expansion has a wow factor. And so it looks to me like this is a proposal. Um, I'm actually not sure if the proposal is being voted on right now. Again, I, I put, like, I'm going to research this. Just didn't have the time yet. Just thought I'd at a minimum mention it because it sounds so fascinating, even just on the surface. But you're, you're talking about having oracles on the XRP ledger. And so the, my, one of my first thoughts was, well, there's not layer one because not, you know, you're not going to have a blockchain that literally does all things for all people. I understand that, including XRP. So there's lots of utility for XRP and the XRP ledger. That said, I'm a realist and XRP ledger won't do all things that cryptocurrencies can do. And that's OK, too. And the XRP ledger doesn't have a natively smart contract functionality. So that you could call that one of the negatives. That's fine. It's, it's not like that's necessarily the end of the world. But I was thinking without smart contract functionality, what are these these oracles? Like, what are they going to do? Like, because they're basically, you're talking about data centers, basically. So if you're plugging that information in, I, I'm just wondering what the potential utility is there. And the only thing I could think of without having done research yet, admittedly, was um, was perhaps you would have something... Uh, it, it would present some value if you had the hooks amendment pass ultimately, which would provide uh, natively smart contract functionality. So then you're talking about two different proposals that would need to pass. And then it would be interesting to see what the potential might be. But you're talking about the types of things that you can do on other slower platforms, as long as it doesn't 
hamper you know the speed of of, um, of the XRP ledger, especially positioning XRP as is fantastic for payments. Uh, that would be fantastic. I'm not a developer though. I'm not a coder guy. So we'd have to have all those people hash all this out and make sure that it wouldn't be somehow crippling to the XRP ledger. And they're always figuring that stuff out when amendments are being pro, uh, proposed and doing all sorts of test nets and so on and so forth with code proposals. But that would be something because you're, you're talking about, you know, piping in data from the outside world into the XRP ledger environment. I just still have questions about what that looks like, given that we don't have smart contract functionality. But if that can all be figured out and it magically comes together, that would be absolutely mind blowing. So I don't know if it's going to. Uh, I'm going I am going to research this, but that would certainly represent additional value. But either way, even without that, I'm just saying there's so much already here. Uh, so so you look at that and then you look at how the price has gone down over the last day, in particular, day and a half. In particular, and doesn't it seem to you like perhaps the lower price is not in line with with actual value? I mean, that, that sure is how what it looks like to me. And there was a separate quote also from Linda P. Jones, and I think that this is also nailing it. And she shared, um, um, there was somebody else in the community, shared an article. It was highlighting uh, institutional money, how it's been flowing into um, XRP specifically throughout the year. And according to this article, it's up uh, from institutions, I think 127% since the beginning of the year. I think that's what the article said. I apologize if I'm thinking about something else, but I think that's what this was. But either way, I, I've been reporting recently about the incredible amounts amount of money just flowing in to XRP from institutions. That's definitely true. The infl- like there's rarely been a week this year where there were greater outflow, where there were outflows rather than inflows. On, on you know when you talk about net what happened, uh, it's just been money flowing in, especially after the July 13th ruling from Judge Torres that XRP itself is not a security, and that's not surprising. So that is another piece of the puzzle here. And so Luna P. Jones tweeted out this or posted this because it's X now, no longer Twitter. It's institutional money that will drive X's price higher, in my opinion. Institutions need legal clarity and framework. The lawsuit was one important piece of that. More congressional lawmaking is needed, but it will happen. After that, the money will flow in a huge wave. They are preparing. And so that part I completely agree with as well. I think it's very clear, and there's no shortage of evidence, that the institutions who are in the world of crypto, they are and have paid attention to this. They want to be ready for when the next thing happens. The price going down, just it's not in line with the actual value of XRP and the XRP ledger. Unless you want to make the argument that there's no value to crypto in general. And so if you have some no-coiners out there, they'd probably say crap like that. But given that if, if you're talking to somebody that's in this space, you want to talk about actual utility, well, <laughs> duh. It's just, it is not sufficiently appreciated though. And there, there is by some people, which is the reason that XRP has always been in the top 10 cryptos by market cap. And that's only true of three coins, Bitcoin, ETH, and XRP. That's it. You can't say that about any other coin on the planet out of over 20,000 coins. So there are some people like you and me that actually do value that stuff, but not a lot, which is why you still see everything move around in tandem for those bigger moves. Uh, and I don't think that's going to necessarily change anytime soon. This is just a much longer process than what many people were thinking or hoping, perhaps. But it is what it is, and we can't control that. And I do believe eventually the world will recognize the actual value of all this. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. And I do think people will increasingly value the concept of crypto anyway. So XRP will certainly be a benefit of that, I would believe. I mean, the idea of having an asset that you control, you know, no central authority. I mean, I'm glad that we first got that with Bitcoin and that launched it it's all into this world. And I don't talk about that as much because it's at this point for anybody in crypto, if you've been here more than five minutes, like it's at the point where we just understand that and accept it. Maybe, maybe we are starting to take it for granted. Maybe. Um, I hope I'm not taking it for, I do appreciate it. I just don't think about it as much. So maybe uh, either way, I'm just saying that's, that's something that's always going to be core to this. Because fiat currencies are a complete and utter disaster on a global scale. Pick one. For me, I, I, I'm just, I'm not thrilled about it. <laughs> you know, losing value. It just it, the central authority. Thing, it's, there's a better way to do stuff. And it's, it's been found out. Starting with Bitcoin. So all that to say, it, you know, when, when the market comes back here, and with each market cycle, there's more people like me, there's more people like you who actually care about value, and we're going to keep getting driven in that direction when more and more time passes. Uh, one of the reasons that I believe that will be the case 
is because as time passes, there will be more actual utility and adoption of cryptocurrencies for specific use cases. It becomes even more clear to the general public, and then the money just flows where it needs to flow. Like, these problems work themselves out. So even though we haven't seen that catch up to this point, I just refuse to believe that it's never going to happen. I refuse to believe that. And so there's a couple ways that I've considered this, and I still believe this makes sense because we haven't had sufficient maturation of the asset class. Uh, number one, first of all, it's, it's not that we necessarily have to wait for maturation of the asset class for XRP to be adopted in some sort of ridiculous fashion for it to be worth our time to be holding it and investing in general, right? Because we have market cycles where it's like people got this sense, like there's something to this crypto thing. They can kind of see it and they can see the value uh, of, you know, just having something that can kind of behave like money, but nobody actually really com com controls it. There is no central, like people can get that. People start to get that and they can see in certain cryptocurrencies being used for specific use cases, helping businesses. You, you can kind of see that. But what I'm getting at is, you know, e even without that being sufficiently appreciated, the asset class is moving in tandem, so there's still that opportunity for life-changing wealth even before maturation of the asset class, even before XRP is adopted in a much more meaningful way, and before it has even more utility to offer. That can still be achieved. And so perhaps by the time we reach full maturation, XRP would be worth far beyond whatever it's going to peak at during its next market cycle. But the neat thing is, since there's so much, so little money in crypto, rather, uh, I mean, you're talking about a little over $1 trillion market cap. I don't even know if it may dip below. Actually, I didn't check the, the global market cap after the dip the other day. Now I think about it. I was just looking at individual price for like Bitcoin and XRP and a bunch of other coins. Either way, so it's, it's around a trillion though. Um, you know, I just, I don't think that we're going to need to, to, to wait for a, a mature asset class <laughs> because there's so little money in crypto. Like by the time it gets going, I mean, just think about this. A fraction of a percent of humans... Uh, having ever held XRP caused it to run to almost $4 when it hit its all-time high back in early 2018. So to get that multiplier effect where it's so meaningful to so many people, we don't need the adoption. It's more so speculation now, but that's okay. There's utility to speculation, keeping things around here, keeping people in, keeping people interested. That's an important part of this, which I think is underappreciated, actually. I think, I think that, if anything, speculators don't get sufficient appreciation, even though I half-jokingly call them useful idiots regularly. It's because people are being idiots. They're making important financial decisions with their emotions, but it, there really is utility there. That's why I call them useful idiots, right? <laughs> but, so, but the purpose being served here... It's, it's of, of crucial importance. Without these markets, like, I, I, most, if not all, of the utility wouldn't exist for, for in the world of crypto, right? So it is what it is. It's just, But um, all that to say, so I'm sorry if that was a little bit long, but I just kind of wanted to get this idea across because I see people freaking out over the price, and I'm sitting here looking, okay, so it's even more undervalued now. That's the way I'm looking at it. And... And even outside of that, though, on a shorter term, if you're looking, at, like I said, before sufficient maturation of the asset class, market cycles are still a thing, right? Market cycles are still a thing. We're going to have another it's age of euphoria, just like we've had multiple times over the last 14 years since Bitcoin's inception. I just, I don't see that ceasing to exist. And that's why I want to talk about some of the utility that's actually here. And how many people know these things that I just cited in terms of utility? How many people actually know these things? Now, if you've been in the XRP community for a while, you probably do, even if you don't know all of them. B but again, or maybe if you knew, or maybe, you, maybe you're just still learning, you don't know much, but e either way, like it still exists. That's the point. We know, I know, you know, you're paying attention, or if you knew, you're learning this now. But that's the point. We're here before everybody else. <laughs> I don't know about you folks. I feel pretty damn good about this. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.